Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest this segment is Dan Blondell. He's the founder and CEO of Nano One Materials Corp, trading on the TSXV under the symbol NNO. Dan, good to see you, literally. Yeah, well, it's, it's great to be here. Thank you very much. Sure. All right. Why don't we start with a quick overview? What is it that Nano One Materials is in the business of doing? Nano One Materials is in the uh, the business of making the cathode materials. That's the stuff that stores energy materials in a lithium ion battery. So we have technology uh, to improve the way those materials are made. Okay, so is this a graphite cathode then? No. So so uh, the, the lithium ion battery actually has two electrodes. One is the uh, is the anode, and that actually is where the graphite is. And then the other side of the battery. Is the is the cathode, and that's typically made of a combination of materials: lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt. Uh, there's all kinds of different formulations, but uh, the common denominator there is lithium, um, and, and and of course the the other mixtures of metals varies depending on the application. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what is it that Nano One does differently from existing cathode manufacturers? Well, existing cathode manufacturers will take the lithium, the nickel, the manganese, and they'll grind and mill it all together using a uh, uh, using milling machines in a very mechanical method uh, before putting it in a furnace to to cook it at uh, uh, at the very high temperatures. And what we do differently is we do the mixing chemically up front. We do it in an aqueous format, which basically means in, in, a, in a bath of water. Uh, and we do it at room temperature, atmospheric pressure. And that enables us to get the, the, the atoms of nickel and lithium and, and manganese all very, very intimately mixed before we go to the furnace. So it, it cuts down furnace time. It enables us to get a better structure that will hold those lithium ions. And uh, it also enables us to uh, embed some uh, some other materials, the, the pixie dust that makes the the, the the cathode material perform better. So you've been getting patents granted for this, so it must be considerably different from the industry standard. Yeah, when we started this uh, this company some years ago, we identified what we felt was a greenfield opportunity, a, a place where patents weren't being. Uh, pursued and uh, we started to stake our ground there and it's largely about the the process for assembling nickel lithium cobalt into cathode materials uh, and we started that process five years ago the the patenting process and uh, we're now starting to see uh, some of that fruit bear out and we've we've just had our sixth patent issued and we expect uh, at least a few more in the coming months um, and we continue to to file patents uh, we probably have 30 to 40 in the pipe right now around the world Hmm. Okay, interesting. So you're not actually, are you selling cathodes now? Are you manufacturing cathodes and selling them into auto manufacturers? No, so, so we are a technology company. We're developing the technology to make the cathode materials. Uh, our intent is to license the technology or partner with a cathode manufacturer or a chemical company to make those cathode materials. Obviously, it's a it's a it's a very large large and detailed industry with many barriers to entry, and we feel that the the shortest route to commercialization is to do it with an existing uh, chemical uh, uh, company or uh, an existing cathode manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do the cathodes that Nano One produces are they going to be cheaper than the ones that are currently used in, say, the average Tesla? So the, the cathode material certainly we're aiming to be cheaper. Uh, we're, we, a lot of the cost in cathode materials is governed by the cost of the raw materials coming in. So cobalt and lithium are at a historic highs right now, and of course they dominate the cost of the cathode material. Obviously, anything we can do to reduce the cost of assembling them, uh, i.e., the, the manufacturing, the production costs, will benefit the cost of the material. But ultimately, what we're trying to do is also improve the performance of the material. So really, the dollars per kilowatt or, or the, the cost of, uh, of a given amount of performance, let's say the longevity or the capacity or the number of charges or the, or the, 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 uh, the current or the, the rate at which you can charge a battery also plays into performance. So, so we, we balance those when we, uh, when we design the systems and what we're trying to do is optimize the, the really the, the cost of performance in the battery material itself. 
Right. So when you say the performance, you're talking about dollars per kilowatt hour? Yeah, so, so performance is measured in a whole bunch of different ways in batteries. Uh, obviously, the longevity and the life of the battery is, is a key part. Uh, so is the, the kilowatt hours, the amount of energy you can store in the battery at any given time. Uh, the uh, Obviously, safety plays a role. And, uh, and also, the, the, the ability to charge the battery. So the quicker you can charge the battery, obviously, uh, that solves a, a number of... Uh, a number of issues in the marketplace, uh, particularly with uh, electric vehicles. So if we can deliver faster charging batteries uh, to the market, that can actually have a significant impact as well. Right. So how soon till we see these ba these batteries actually being used in, uh, or the cathodes rather, being used in place of the ones that are currently used? Well, we're working on, on, a, on a, a wide variety of different cathode materials. I think for the some of the sort of up and coming materials, we are making uh, materials that are going into uh, consumer electronics. Uh, right, we're not making the materials in consumer electronics. We're one, making ones that can actually go into them. We're roughly uh, once we build a plant, once we get the we hit go, and we begin the process of. Uh, of manufacturing, it's probably a year and a half uh, from the time we, we hit the go button on a, on a license deal to be able to be manufacturing materials and putting them in batteries. Uh, so I see that uh, your share price has essentially quadrupled in the last year. And is that a reflection of the proximity to actual commercial production of your products and therefore licensing revenue that we're getting? I think I think that plays a role in it. Uh, there, obviously, we're in a we're in a we're in a hot space right now, and that uh, that that plays a part in it. I think our innovations uh, on the cathode materials have uh, have brought in a lot of excitement from the from the marketplace. In in particular, we've seen a rise in our share price around the some of the announcements we've made on what we call the high voltage spinel, and that's a that's a cathode material that has no cobalt in it at all. And is a very strong candidate for uh, what we call solid state batteries, which is a next generation in solid state batteries that has much higher density. Uh, it's a much higher density architecture of batteries. So you can basically pack more energy into a given space with a, with a solid state battery. And this high voltage panel, which has no cobalt in it and is very high in manganese, is, is a relatively low cost from a raw material point of view, and it enables this, these high density, safer solid state batteries. So I, I think uh, a, a you know, good portion of the excitement is coming around that. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm stunned there. Did you say a cathode with no cobalt in it? I did indeed. Uh, you know, we work on a variety of different materials. Uh, some of them have cobalt in it and some of them don't. Uh, one of the most exciting ones is is this spinel material. It's uh, it's it's dominantly manganese uh, with some nickel in it and and a balance of lithium, but there is no cobalt in it. It uh, it's it's it runs at the highest voltage of any of the cathode materials, so it delivers very good power, and it's a very fast charging and discharging material, so it, it charges much quicker uh, than uh, than the the materials that we have in our phones, for instance, and that are going, currently going into. Uh, electric vehicles. So it, it's, a, it's a very promising material, however it needs to be enabled in a, in a solid state platform that uh, a lot of the large uh, electric vehicle companies are working on and see as this next generation uh, lithium ion battery. Hmm. Fascinating. Dan, we'll cut it there right now because we're at the limit of the attention span of the average internet viewer. So thank you so much for that. We're going to come back to you in a quarter's time and, uh, and, and see how you're doing. Thank you again. Oh, well, Thank you very much. I really enjoyed being on your show.